but at that time, some force from the outside must, f must serve to liberate their bodies. The spells that preserved them intact likewise prevented them from making an initial move, and they could only lie awake in the dark and think whilst uncounted millions of years rolled by. They knew all that was occurring in the universe, for their mode of speech was transmitted thought. Even now they talked in their tombs, when after infinities of chaos, the first men came, the great old ones spoke to the sensitive among them by molding their dreams, for only thus could their language reach the fleshy minds of mammals. Then whispered Castro, those first men formed the cult around tall idols which the great ones showed them. Idols brought in dim eras from dark stars. That cult would never die till the stars came right again and the secret priests would take great Cthulhu from his tomb to revive his subjects and resume his rule of earth. The time would be easy to know, for then mankind would have become, as the great old ones, free and wild beyond good and evil, with laws and morals thrown aside, and all men shouting and killing and reveling in joy. Then the liberated old ones would teach them new ways to shout and kill and revel and enjoy themselves, and all the earth would flame with a holocaust of ecstasy and freedom. Meanwhile the cults by appropriate rites must keep alive the memory of those ancient ways and shadow forth the prophecy of their return. In the elder time, chosen men had talked with the entombed old ones in dreams, but then something happened. This great city of Raleigh, with its, with its monoliths and sepulchres, had sunk beneath the waves and the deep waters full of the one primal mystery through which not even thought can pass, had cut off the spectral intercourse. But memory never died, and the high priests said that the city would rise again, and when the stars were right, then came out of the earth the black spirits of the earth, moldy and shadowy, and full of dim rumors, picked up in caverns beneath forgotten sea bottoms. But of them old Castro dared not speak much. He cut himself off hurriedly, and no amount of persuasion or subtlety could elicit more in this direction. The size of the old ones, too, he curiously declined to mention. Of the cult, he said, that he thought the center lay amid the pathless desert of Arabia, where Irim, the city of pillars and dreams, was hidden and untouched. It was not allied to the European witch cult, and was virtually unknown beyond its members. No book had ever really hinted of it, though the deathless Chinamen said there were double meanings in the Necronomicon of the mad Arab Adul Azarad, which the initiated might read as they chose, especially the much discussed copulet as follows. That is not dead, which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even death may die. Legrassi deeply impressed, and not a little bewildered, 
had inquired in vain concerning the historic affiliations of the cult, Castro apparently had told the truth when he said it was wholly secret. The authorities at Tulane University could not shed light upon either the cult or the image, and now the detective had come to the highest authorities in the country and met with no more than the Greenland tale of Professor Webb. The feverish interest aroused at the meeting by Lagrassi's tale corroborated as it was by the statuette, is echoed in the subsequent correspondence of those who attend it. Although scant mention occurs in the formal publications of the society, caution is the first care of those accustomed to face occasional shallantry and imposture. The grassy for some time lent the image to Professor Webb, but at the latter's death it was returned to him and remains in his possession, where I viewed it not too long ago. It is truly a terrible thing, and unmistakably akin to the dream sculpture of young Wilcox. That my uncle was excited by the tale of the sculptor, I did not wonder. For what thoughts must arise upon hearing, after a knowledge of what Lagrassi had learned of the cult, of a sensitive young man who had dreamed not only of the figure and the exact hieroglyphs of the swamp found image and the Greenland Devil Tablet, but had come in his dreams upon at least three of the precise words of the formula uttered alike by the Escomax Diabolists and mongrel Louisianans. Professor Engel's instant start on an investigation of the utmost thoroughness was eminently natural, though privately I suspected young Wilcox of having heard of the cult in some indirect way and having invented a series of dreams to heighten and continue the mystery at my uncle's expense. The dream narratives and cuttings collected by the professor were, of course, strong corroboration, but the rationalism of my mind and the extravagance of the whole subject led me to adopt what I thought the most sensible conclusions. So, after thorough studying of the manuscript again, and correlating the theosophical and anthropological notes with the cult narrative of Lagrassi, I made a trip to Provence to see the sculptor and give him the rebuke I thought proper for so boldly imposing upon a learned and aged man. Wilcox still lived alone in the Feu de Lise building, in Thompson Street, a hideous Victorian imitation of 17th century Brayton architecture, which flaunts its stuccoed front amidst the lovely Onlio houses on the ancient hill and under the very shadow of the finest Gregorian steeple in America. I found him at work in his rooms, and at once concluded from the specimens scattered about that his genius is indeed profound and authentic. He will, I believe, sometime be heard from as one of the great de decadents, for he has crystallized in clay, and will one day mirror in marble those nightmares and fantasies which Arthur McCain evokes in prose, and Clark Ashton Smith makes visible in verse and in painting. Dark, frail, and somewhat unkept in aspect, he turned languidly at my knock and asked me my business without rising, 
Then I told him who I was, and he displayed some interest, for my uncle had excited his curiosity in probing his strange dreams, yet had never explained the reason for the study.